guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about torso hooks and programming bays. So uh, yeah, we got some work to do, so let's jump right into it. Next step is to get the uh, couple of things mounted onto the torso so we can get the holes drilled and get all that mess out of the way before we do final finishing work on it. And one of those things are these, which are called the torso hooks. Now, uh, the torso hooks go on uh, the top of the torso on kind of like the shoulder area and uh, they consisted of a hook here and then a rubberized gasket which would go between the hook and the body which is what this little plate is signifying here now um, these can be used either structurally or non-structurally so I tried to 3d print these from uh, regular PLA and stuff but that plastic is going to be too brittle and not strong enough because this is a great place to uh, grab onto if you're trying to lift the torso off the robot, which is, you know, again, gonna have some weight to it when all the stuff is in it. So, um, these were actually 3D printed. These are steel, uh, and they were actually 3D printed by Shapeways, very famous 3D printing company that you can send your, um, drawings too, right? And they'll print anything you want in pretty much any material. It's amazing this is printed out of steel. It's it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, and um, it's perfect to the specifications. Has the six holes, uh, which have the uh, reliefs in them, so the screws will set flush. It's even got the built-in uh, plate here in the bottom, which makes it look like the rubber. Now that was painted silver normally anyway, so it's not like you will notice it and it even has the little grooves on the edge here for what the rubber uh, seal would have had so these are amazing unfortunately this company literally like two days ago I think it was declared bankruptcy and is shutting down so I was lucky to get these printed by them because these are the best I've ever seen there are some uh, club members that do make some of these uh, they're they're okay but they don't have the holes in them like the uh, original and they have a lot of really messy welds that they do because uh, they have to weld this piece onto the base plate. And it doesn't look very good uh, comparative to this. This thing looks absolutely perfect. Um, requires no prep. And this goes right on the robot for texture and painting and be done with it. So, But we have to get these on the robot, so let's go uh, look at the uh, specifications. As you can see from the blueprints, basically, it's uh, it goes here on each of the sides of the um, torso, and it kind of gives you, it goes the center line basically down. You can see it's the center line of the vent here, which goes up here, which would be the center line of the circle up here where the head rides on, right? Um, so, and then on the next page, this gives me the dimensions of the space between the bottom and the top. So this is looking at the robot from the front here. You can see it's on his shoulders right here. And then there's the specification and where everything goes. So we just have to measure all this out. And uh, let's go over to the torso and take a look. It can be uh, sort of uh, hard to get the locations of all these pieces when you're dealing with all these curved and round surfaces, right? So it's really hard to measure. So first thing I did is I put a piece of plexiglass disc up here so I could fill this in on the top temporarily. And then I found the center of that disc, which is right here using uh, Thales theorem, like I showed you before. And now I know the exact center of the disc and this center line going across here. This is the front center right here between the opening of the torso. And this is all perpendicular. So now I have a mark right here that is my line that I go off of. Now this line then comes down the side of the torso and that's where the hook will be, right? So I just come down the appropriate space I need to right here and then all I'm gonna do is, you know, make sure it's lined up center-wise right here. If you look down here, this would go down, be center on that. It doesn't have to be absolutely flawless, perfect, right? Nobody's gonna notice or see it. It just has to be very close to where it should be. And then I just measured right here and right here, which is one and three eighths between the two. This is pretty much centered in this section. And then I marked a hole right here with a pencil. So what I'll do first is drill one single hole and then we'll 
uh, put the screw in here, nut on the other side. And then once we do that, then we can move it left and right to make sure it's like completely perpendicular going down here, right? So it's a straight line and it's not off, but you have to look at it from a bunch of different angles, right? And so that's all I'm doing. So I'm going to put that on the other side, get these two holes drilled, and then we'll find out exactly where it needs to be, snug it down, and then mark all the other holes and get those drilled. And then once those are drilled, we're set. And we'll take this off and then this all get finished first before uh, they get put on in the final step. The other thing we have to do is down here on the bottom of this side right here, the power pack has to go here. And so there's going to be three audio jacks, which is basically the mounting, how it's mounted in there. And we got to find the three holes, get this positioned. So you saw the specifications there also on the drawing where it showed the power pack comes down off that same line right here. It's in so far and ups from the bottom. And then those three holes need to be drilled so I can put the little jacks in. So we need to get that marked and get those drilled. So I got the first uh, bolt in here and then basically all I did is I tied a string and I just put a weight on it. I just tied a wrench at the, actually the bottom. And what I'm doing here is the center of this opening at the bottom right here is also where this line falls through. So I have a mark right here. And then all I did was I tied that string to the bottom of the hook here, made sure it was centered, and then just let this hang down and even out and then once it stopped moving then I could tell if the uh, string coming up here was going crooked or if it actually went and matched right on the little mark right down here and then I could just twist the uh, torso hook just a little left and right to straighten it out and then I just kind of walked around and looked at it and you know visually does it look like it's straight and it does so I marked all my holes and that's it. So I'm gonna drill all these holes and we'll be finished with this side and we'll do the same thing on the other. Right, now that we got the um, torso hooks on and the power pack holes drilled, we've got, we're gonna do something else. So we, before we take this and really start finishing, doing the final finishing on this and all the body work we have to do on it, there's a bunch of stuff we wanna get mounted and settled first and then we can take them out. But there's a couple of things which are these vents right here. Uh, so there's four of these vents, three large ones and one small one for the front. Now the one on the front goes with the programming bay and that has a special setup. But these other three right here, uh, you can either have them sliding or non-sliding. And basically they're these pieces right here and all they are are, um, you know, plexi, uh, acrylic material and uh, you know they have these sort of rails on the top and the bottom and there are corresponding channels that go with them. This is just a piece of PVC here and then the one is aluminum. So the aluminum channel is the one you see and that goes sort of like right on the um, edge right here so to speak. Uh, where you can actually see the aluminum right here. The PVC portion actually goes down in here somewhere and you have to, you know, th again, there's no real mounting on the inside, right? This is just a fiberglass case and nothing is necessarily consistent as far as shape goes and everything. So these have to be mounted inside here and then what happens is when you get the two rails actually mounted, which I think is just going to be like an epoxy mount. Um, what will happen is it'll look like sort of like this and you'll be able to open it up by just sliding it over like so. Right? This, uh, you know, when it's on its rails. But the thing about it is, is you got to make sure it can clear everything and it's not hitting anything. You can slide it over and slide it closed, right? And then behind these, there's actually a mesh uh, screen that's kind of behind it. We'll get, get that doesn't matter right now because that um, will be cut so that it's basically above the rails, so won't interfere. But the main thing is to try to get these rails mounted inside here if I can and get that out of the way because it's a big job. It can get messy, especially if you're dealing with epoxy, and to get it right and everything. 
But that's kind of like, you know, kind of what it looks like, you know, when it's actually in finally. And that's the way it looked on this TV series. But we want these operational so that I can reach my hand in here and do different things. Like either uh, take the torso off the main robot, disconnect wires, whatever. Especially when we get to the arms and stuff like that. So I want the three functional and then the one on the front is the programming bay. So first thing we need to do is we're going to start with the programming bay actually because uh, we have to actually make this whole little bay that goes uh, right here and the programming bay in the series had a whole bunch of switches and lights in it and had a little tape reel you know for his programming and stuff like that this vent actually opens up too so you can get in there and flip switches and do things uh, but we have to actually create the bay and all that stuff that goes in there one and two, what's nice about it is the one of the club members makes this bay kit and it already has the mounts for the rails and everything. So for the front one, it's a lot easier when the rail, uh, the whole rail and the, the um, grills mount right on the uh, programming bay. And all you have to do is get the programming bay mounted in here. That's still another big job, but um, because again, uh, it all has to do, there's no mounts on the inside here, right? We've got to come up with mounts, epoxy them in, like it's a whole big deal. So, but first thing we're gonna do is uh, go and look at this programming bay and how we're gonna assemble it. So if you're not familiar with the programming bay, basically this is kind of a picture of it, what it looks like. This is obviously not in a robot, but it has the uh, three uh, toggle switches on it. It's got a light, some decals, and then a little dial over here which in the series was just a dummy dial, didn't do anything. And then there's an actual tape reel here. Uh, you know, the old, um, uh, so the old reel to reel uh, audio tapes, right? That's what that is here. And it's just got a sort of an axle or pin that holds it in so it can spin around, etc. So, and that's kind of what it looks like. So let's look at the kit. Luckily, one of our club members actually makes this kit, which is he does a fantastic job. This thing is absolutely beautiful. Um, so he's, he sells it like this, um, sort of, I don't want to say unassembled, but you have to do some work on it. This is a brushed stainless steel, uh, pretty much plate that's been, you know, cut out, uh, probably laser cut, and um, has tabs on it and stuff. But basically you can see it's perforated along the edges here. So what will happen is this will come in, the top will come down, the little pins go through the slots and you bend them over and you sort of make a unit out of it, right? And then he, he sells another kit, which is all the stuff that goes in here uh, to, you know, the switches, the light, the tape reel, the whole deal, everything that goes inside of here. And then a lot of guys will actually on the top part of the plate here, which you can't see, because when it's in the robot, it's like this, right? So you can't see underneath it. They'll put little push buttons right here very low profile small push buttons. The reason is is because then you can you, you can reach in the programming bay and do some more commands if you wanted to and things like that. Um, but anyway, so, and then what happens is this is this would be you know facing the front here. So the rail that goes for the uh, grill, as you can see, has holes pre-drilled right here that fit on these angled tabs that are everything's you know already perfect. And you can see that goes like that. And then the bottom of the grill fits in that rail. And then there's three holes on the top right here that go to the other rail. So it's all ready to go. So this would be a complete unit with the rail in it, right? That would just work. Now this front one is a smaller, uh, it's less width than the bigger wider ones on the other three. So, but it covers that section right there. And so, yeah, so that's, it's a really nice kit. Um, that he does a great job on and uh, so yeah got my fingerprints over here but uh, once we clean this up here um, this will this will be fantastic so and it has a nice finish on it I may uh, just for oxidation purposes clean it you know get my fingerprints off of it and then clear coat it uh, maybe after I'm finished getting it all assembled and everything like that because it's uh, really nice that you don't have to paint this or anything. So that's really what it is. I'll show you the rest of the kit when we get to that point. And I do want to do one little cool little thing 
uh, that's not part of the kit, uh, which is that little tape rail here, which normally just sits there. I want to get some kind of a little motor or something on the back to make it move and spin around. I think that'll be super cool to have that little motion in there of that. Because that, that tape reel is supposed to be the robot's programming tape, right? So it should be running, technically. But um, yeah, so we'll, we'll, when we get to that point, I'll show you my idea of how I'm going to make that spin. But uh, yeah, that's what we got to do. So uh, yeah, let me try to get these bent and assembled first, and then we'll go from there. So you can see I've got this bent a little bit up each way. I actually used a piece of uh, wood here and just I like uh, draped it over the wood to bend it along that curve just to make sure. Although it bends nice and easy and you can see the little sort of seams that bend right there. So it's actually really nice. So all you really have to do is then bend the top down and get these little uh, tabs here into these slots. Once they're in the slots then I believe you just either twist them or bend them over however you want to do it and then that makes your unit and then you're ready to mount your rails on top of the unit there it is after you uh you know bend it and put the tabs through and i just twisted the tabs and then what i did is i took a piece of uh wood here just a two by four like this if you put it like that and you just tap on this corner right here what will happen is it'll bring it completely flat so that there's no gap here and then you can twist the two tabs and now you got a nice secure piece and this is great it's all ready to go so now what we're going to do is mount the rails here and then up here i'll show you what that looks like and then uh that's pretty much it as far as that goes and we're ready to then start mounting the stuff that goes inside the programming bay here so there we go we've got the two rails mounted on it as you can see now if you notice on the one side here like the rail butts up against it but on the other side it actually goes over it that's because this curve right here is cut lower than this curve on the opposite side and the reason is is we want the vent right so when it's in, actually in here like so you can see what it looks like right and so it basically opens one direction, right? It goes, this is open, you make your adjustments, you close it, and that's it. And it does bottom out on this side, although that's not centered. It would be more like right about here in the opening that's uh, in the actual torso itself. But if you did go over like that, we could. And actually what we could do is up here in this rail, once we know exactly where it is, we could actually just put a screw here, right here on this, top rail and run it up through and then that way when it, you close it it will always bottom out exactly to the right centered position so that's easy to do um, once we get it mounted so mounting it is the harder part actually now there are so that's really nice slides great so just a fantastic kit um, now the two tabs up here are for mounting this onto the torso but Again, there's nothing in the torso to mount it against, right? You've got to almost like create, get some L brackets and first epoxy them into the fiberglass. Then once they're there, then you can use these to attach it. Uh, on the bottom here, they also, there are two screws holes right here on the bottom here uh, that you can actually use too. I don't know how that's gonna work either. So, you know, this the harder part is actually getting this mounted in the torso. But we're pretty much ready to go here, except for we've got to put all the pieces on the inside here. So, and that's really what's left. Notice on the top here, don't forget, there's these little plastic spacers that go between the um, gray PVC rail and the top of the stainless steel unit. Um, and that's what makes this fit in here perfectly. So if you notice, now the uh, top here is pretty much almost you know closer to the top if you forget that this will be sort of like bent in a little bit right so um, I almost forgot those little spacers which come with the kit so don't forget those but you can see it works great this is the uh, sort of the way it looks when it's finally finished you can see it slides back and forth really nice right now so I've got it installed and really what you're after is a small gap right here at the bottom that goes across between the acrylic and the body so about, you know, 16th, 8th inch or so. And same thing along this line right here, right? Between the body and the acrylic, you want about 16th, 8th, right? And so 
really so this doesn't rub against anything so you don't chip off paint when you're opening and closing it but you can see how nice it just slides right very easy and the way I mounted it was on the inside I actually created two studs right here so if I pull this off you can see I countersunk two screws from the other side and all I did is I put some uh, nuts lock washers on there to hold the studs in so they don't move and then I just use washers to build it up even it out however I need it and then it'll get a final nut put on it so once we have the torso painted and finished then it'll get a final you know bolt down right here and that'll pretty much be it and then over here on the tabs that you see right here because they can't go through the front of the body because they're right on a seam at the worst place um, what will happen with those is they'll be epoxied so a lot of stuff inside the torso because it's fiberglass and you can't drill through it because you'd be drilling through to the outside gets um, epoxied inside here so the main holding portion of this will be these two bolts down the bottom here but these will just be a secondary thing to make sure it stays close to the body and those will be just epoxied right in there now obviously you got to cut these little screws off here because they're sticking up there's lights that come through here but um, yeah that's pretty much it so at this point we're ready to uh, finish out the programming bay by cleaning it up clear coating it and then putting all the switches lights decals and everything else on it and then that little tape reel and uh, hopefully uh, some kind of mechanism to make that tape reel turn so that's going to be our pretty much our next step but that's one vent out of four now that uh, will work really nice once it's uh, all said and done all right so here's the kit that goes with the programming bay so we have three um, toggle switches here these look like just single pole toggle switches here um, we've got a magnetic tape reel this is a blast from the past here um, so this is magnetic recording tape reel uh, we've got this little sort of dial right here and it's printed with the correct numbers on it You probably can't see them in the camera, but there's numbers printed on the face of it. This is just a fake uh, Dial, but what it's supposed to be technically is like sort of a probably like a Rhea stat type of adjustment type of dial That would have been on the front there. So that's just a display piece and then we've got this It's really a fuse holder is what it is, but instead of a fuse it just has a brass shaft in between and that's what the tape reel is actually going to ride on this diameter of this brass shaft is the same as the opening on the tape reel right here and then we've got some uh, decals that go on here and then we've got a pilot light here this is Sylvania old school autopilot light with a yellow uh, globe on it and that's pretty much our kit. Uh, there's a big washer here also in the kit. I don't know where this goes. I'll have to figure it out. I'll have to go look it up. But uh, that's uh, also in the kit and that's it. So we just have to get all this put into the programming bay and get it all set up. And then um, now these switches are real. We can actually use these for different things for on and off different types of things. So what we should do is wire these up first before we put them in get these all soldered up. Uh, with some wire leads coming off of it and then later on when we decide what we're going to use them for then we can uh, hook them up so here's the bay uh, we've got our switches right here our light and then this uh, other switch up here which has a black washer around it this is all um, authentic correct uh, the way this is all laid out here and then we have our tape reel right here so cool uh, old style tape reel which would have been his programming reel and what I've done actually is I added something a little extra here on mine, which is you probably can't see it, but there's little two little washers here that take up the gap from the uh, tape reel going back and forth because there's some slack in there. And the reason I'm doing that is because um, when I figure out how I'm going to motorize this and make it turn, I don't want it flopping as much, right? So I'm taking up the gap right there with it basically. And um, yeah, so now the only other thing that goes on here in the programming bay is... The little potentiometer knob uh, but this is not the right color um, it has to be painted black and then there are some decals there's three decals 
that actually get applied uh, right next to this switch, this light, and then the potentiometer. So there's three specific decals uh, that get applied to those areas. And then that's it as far as the front of the programming bay and everything is pretty much all finished. And then what we're going to do on the back here is we are going to figure out how we're going to make this uh, little tape reel turn. And I have an idea. I think that will work. Uh, but uh, we've got to like experiment with it a little bit. So next step, get this uh, potentiometer knob here painted. Again, this one is a dummy one. It's not an actual real potentiometer in the back of this one. Uh, but it has the appropriate stamped numbers in, in the knob and stuff like that. So just have to get that in there and painted. And then that just bolts on the back, you know, very simple. And so, yeah, we're getting pretty close to finishing out the programming bay, in which case then we'll put it to the side because we, you know, this goes in last after we get the torso, um, you know, paint finished and everything. So, um, and then we'll move on to the next area. So, uh, the next area I think we're going to look at is the uh, neon itself. Uh, get the backing plate for that and the neon and everything like that. So, so let's finish out the programming bay here first. And really what's happening is we are have to make all these units right now. And then they all sort of go in uh, after, you know, the torso's been finished and we're ready to put all the final pieces in. That's kind of when they go in, so. Go. there's the final programming be all finished so you can see the nice slider here and then of course we've got our switches we got our decals on all the correct decals everything's there we've got our poten potentiometer or rheostat knob painted black we got a little we hand painted the silver in the center there where the you know the little um slot would be for your screwdriver if you're adjusting it right so all good everything's good on this side so that's all finished. This is ready to go into the robot when we get to that point. So now the only thing we want to do is try to make this little tape reel motorized. And so let me show you how we're going to do that. What I've done is I've gotten a little micro mini motor here. This is actually a planetary gear motor, believe it or not. It's so small, but it's got planetary gears in it. Uh, and it's like 3.54 volt. Um, and so it has a very slow speed. Uh, like 30 rpms and what i did is on you can't see it here uh but underneath this black uh cloth tape here i just have a little dremel uh that you use on your dremel tool for grinding so it's a little sort of conical uh sort of shaped um cylinder that i glued onto the shaft of this uh motor and then I just wrapped that with some black cloth electrical tape. That's that stuff I use all the time that's very sticky. Once the tape sticks to itself, it never comes loose. And I just wrapped it around enough times to sort of make it so it was like a little bit of a, almost like a, a soft cushion where the two edges of the reel could sort of like push into it. The reason I did that is because of one particular spot on the reel, which is right here where you see this gap. So when I was using just the hard um, Dremel uh, polisher tip, it basically, as soon as it hit this gap, it stopped, it got stuck in the gap. It couldn't get by it uh, because it didn't have enough friction. So what I did is I wrapped it in this black cloth electrical tape a couple of times. And what happens is because of that, the it the reel sort of sets into the tape almost like creating a groove a little bit but the tape is much more has much more friction than the little um polisher tip because that one was more smooth and um and then i all i did is i put some double-sided tape here temporarily it's just a temporary for testing purposes to see so What's going to happen is you can see I can move it a little bit right here. It's going to need just a tiny bit of tension against this in order to make it work, right? So uh, let me show you how it works. So I'm going to uh, turn this on right here. So what I did is I've got a little... Let me show up right 
here. Hold on one sec. Let's get rid of all this stuff out of the way here. Um, so basically what I did is I put a, I have a buck converter right here that's going to take this 12 volts, which remember that's my main bus in the robot, and drop it down to three, uh, three, three and a half, I forget what I said it to. And then that's kind of the way it'll work. So let me turn this on here. And I should, uh... It should work. What am I missing here? Uh, oh, I didn't put the wires on here. Hold on. All right. So you can see the little wheel turning right here, but you can see that the tape reel is actually not turning, right? It's trying a little bit, but it's not quite turning. So if I just put a tiny bit of pressure on it, just a little bit, you can see there the tape reel starts turning, right? And that's a perfect speed. See how nice and slow it's going? So, but it just needs a little bit of tension. It just went over that gap too, and you can see it's still spinning. So this method works great. I just have to get the motor permanently mounted so it doesn't move around, and then it'll just, you know, spin the tape reel like so. And that'll look so cool, like if we turn it around here. Got the front here. There, right? Let me just get the motor a little. See how cool that will look once it's uh, actually running inside the robot, right? It'll look like the tape reel is actually working. So I'm I'm really happy about that. These little micro motors are fantastic, and like I said, this one's a planetary gear one. It's not just a straight DC motor. So that's what's cool about it. So all we have to do is basically find the position it needs to be in, right? And what we're going to do is, once I find this position, I'm going to kill the power. I'm going to put some heavy-duty tape so it doesn't move. And I'm going to pop the reel out to take the tension off. Then what we're going to do is we're actually going to get some, this, uh, I'll show you the product. But it's a great epoxy that is like for steel on steel, any kind of metal on metal epoxy. And um, it is the toughest stuff in the world. I mean, you have to drill it and grind it to get it off once you get it on. So it's got to be really careful with this because if we screw it up, it's going to make a mess. And we don't want it getting in these seams right here, which, you know, are the, you'd be able to see from the other side. So we got got to be very careful when we apply it. But we're, basically what we're going to do is put it all over the motor right here, right? And really lock this in place. And then this should never move. Then we'll pop the reel back in, and then it'll have just an amount of tension. Now, for some reason, it was a little out of position. It didn't have quite enough tension. We'll just wrap some more of the black plastic tape around here, and that will take care of it. So, um, so you have some adjustments at that point. But that's what we're going to do. So uh, that epoxy is not here yet. It's coming in tomorrow. So I'll show you that final thing when we're finished. But that will be the end of the programming bay. It'll be all finished and ready to go. So you don't have to see the, uh, you saw it working and that's what it's going to do. I'll take this little green tape off here, but um, you'll see that's uh, kind of like how it'll work. And it'll be a really cool like sort of uh, animated feature uh, once the robot's all put together. And uh, He's all uh, operational, so pretty cool. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed that video on the programming bay, mounting the torso hooks, how to line that all up, and, uh, you know, we got another module out of the way now. So, yeah, just continue on with these modules. So I think the next one we're going to tackle maybe the neon. We'll see. Uh, but just, uh, yeah, check out the next video, so it should be pretty cool. So, as always, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, Put your comments down below about this video, and I'll see you guys on the next uh, robot build video. Peace, guys.